Hyper-charismatic preachers often cite 1 Corinthians 1.10 as a proof text of prophetic revelation and speaking in tongues, specifically where Paul says, well, who among man knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man in him? But 1 Corinthians 1.10 to 14 is not about our supposed words to God, rather it's about the Spirit's one-time word from God to us. In verse 10, Paul describes the Spirit's role in biblical revelation. Paul actually says, who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Right there, Paul's just given a simple little illustration. You know, he kind of jokes. He says, you don't know what I'm thinking and I don't know what you're thinking. His whole point being that nobody really knows the inside of anybody else. But with a twist, he says, but the Spirit of God does know the inside of the Godhead, and it's his role to communicate the plan. In verse 12, he then describes the Spirit's role in biblical inspiration. And he writes, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, to fit together spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Now note the emphasis there is on we have received. Paul's being clear, the Spirit chose him and the apostles, and he gave them words to write. And it was their job to write the spiritual things that you and I actually would get to read. You see, Peter highlighted this when he pointed to the Mount of Transfiguration, where he saw the glory of Christ and heard the booming voice of the Father. But instead of using that as his authority, he says, in scripture, we heard the utterance made from heaven and were with him on the holy mountain, but we have a prophetic word made more sure to which you would do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place. Now, think about that, that's shocking. Peter said, I saw his glory and I heard his voice, but the written word is more sure. The Spirit of God used the apostles of God to write the word of God to forever bless future generations of God. And that is a massive warning to the modern mystics. The Bible became the vehicle of God's revelation. Yes, God's word is for us, but it was given to them. And so often we hear charismatics cry, don't put God in a box, don't put God in the box. When the simple reality is God put us in a box. Then he chose men in the box to write his truth in the box and simply ask you to obey him in the box. Lastly, in verse 14, he highlights the spirit's role in illumination. Verse 14 says, a natural man doesn't accept the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. But he who is spiritual appraises all things. Can you recall when the Bible was gibberish to you? And then suddenly there was that moment when it became clear? That's what he's referring to there. The moment the Bible came to life because of the Spirit's work in your heart. The old preachers used to call that the resident truth teacher because the Spirit enters the heart and he gives the mind of Christ and all truth that you couldn't understand, suddenly, boom, there it is. You could picture it like Wi-Fi. You know, this idea that the truth is out there but you can't really access it without a password. In some ways, the Holy Spirit really is the password of the Godhead, the ancient of revelation and illumination. And that explains so much about our life. You know, why some people will think a preacher is droning on and on, but their wife will lean in and want to obey the word. A husband will care less, or why you may get in a debate with unsaved friends and it feels so circular, or why your family mocks you at Thanksgiving when you talk about the Bible. To sum it all up, it's alarming how many modern mystics want a word, but they never read his word. We must remember that when we hold a Bible, we hold the faith once for all delivered to the saints. He put us in a box, those men in a box, he wrote in the box so we'd obey in the box until death, when we finally leave the box and we see him face to face.